Well, good evening all and welcome to our lecture on laws of limiting factors in ecology. So this is principles of ecology and food cost that's by your third system and I'll be taking us on laws of limiting factors in ecology. So what is actually a limiting factor? So um, I said that limiting factor is defined as an environmental factor or variable that has the capacity to restrict growth, abundance, or distribution of a population in an ecosystem. So the limiting factor is in a pyramid shape of an organism going up from producer to consumer and so on. For instance, when we look at the pyramid of organism, uh, the bottom, those are the bottom are the producers, which are the plants. So um, the factors that will be limiting them will not be the same as that limiting the primary consumers, which are the herbivores. So when we talk about the plants, some of the limiting factors that they could have is water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, which they need for their photosynthesis. So a factor that is not limiting over a certain domain of a starting condition may yet be limiting over another domain of starting condition, just like I explained that the factors limiting to these primary producers, which are the plants, are not the same limiting to the uh, primary consumers, for instance, the herbivores. So, so because the fact that these um, factors or the limiting factors are present in a limited supply, organisms tend to compete for their limited availability in the ecosystem. Just like um, you can also see an example when we talk about you know different limiting factors affecting human beings not minding that we are all of the same species different person have different limiting factor for instance those that came from a poor uh, family could have limiting uh, factors such as uh, inadequate um, cash you know to um, do some certain things they want to do go for vacation and all that and this is not the same limit limiting factor for someone that comes from a rich background you know so a different individual have different um, limiting factor although we have a general limiting factor when we talk about food we talk about water all these are actually essential for uh, an individual to grow and also to uh, multiply as well so I talk about the law of size of a population and I say that this law says that a population will grow exponentially as long as the environment from where all individuals in that population are exposed to remains constant. So in other words, if the environmental conditions are kept the same, the population is expected to grow. Of course, there, come, there will be a time when the population will reach the maximum at which the environment can sustain and this is called the carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity is the number of individuals that an environment can sustain without ending in damage or destruction to the organism and the environment. So the population size may increase until carrying capacity is met. And above this capacity, the population size will eventually decrease. Yes, because the environment has a way of uh, regulating the number of um, organism or population within the ecosystem so some of these could um, in include natural disaster like earthquake in order to reduce the number of population it could also in include um, scarcity of food whereby you, you plant and at the end of the day there's no yield so of course when there's limited food they will have hunger have people dying out of uh, starvation so this is just a way of the environment limiting the number of individuals or population growth within the environment. So uh, when we talk about um, uh, limiting factor, we also talk about different um, competition that occurs within the environment that help to regulate these factors or the growth of a population. So one of them is the intraspecific uh, competition and, and I say that this is a type of competition that occur within the same species. For example, uh, the competition that um, occur within uh, humans okay we can say that they compete for food they compete for mates of course i've seen some girls fighting over a guy uh, what are they fighting for for mates so these are 
intraspecific competition so but when the competition is among different species we say that is an interspecific um, competition just like we have interhouse that uh, the dragon house will compete with maybe octopus and all that during our secondary school so we have the predictor and prey relationship for instance you have the relationship between a deer population and the wolf population of course the wolf used to feed on the deer population so if they continue feeding on this deer population their their population will actually decrease and it will come to a point whereby they have completely eradicated this deer and then what will happen they start eating themselves of course they they, they, they will want to survive and then the law of um, the darwin's law will come into place that's a survivor of the fittest so these actually are what occurs or happen in an ecosystem in order to maintain the number of individual or population in an ecosystem so we'll talk about types of limiting factor and i said that there are two types of limiting factor we have the biotic factor and we have the abiotic factor of course when we, when we hear the word bio it means life so these are the living activity or the activity of living component of an ecosystem so example include the predator prey relationship i talked to us about whereby the wolf continue to feed on the deer population so these are actually a factor that limits the growth of the population of a deer we talk about the abiotic factor which include the physiochemical factors in an ecosystem example include the sunlight the humidity temperature atmosphere soil the geology of the land what and water resources so of course um, temperature for instance is a major limiting factor primarily due to the fact that it affects the effectiveness of enzyme and even catalyst which are essential in an efficient system both in biology and in chemical uh, uh, system so same is um, sunlight of course the plants need sunlight in order to photosynthesize so and all these are limiting factor of course if the plant do not have enough sunlight photosynthesis will not occur and the primary consumers which are the herbivores will not see um, leaves to eat so all these are how the ecosystem regulate themselves in order to maintain a constant growth of um, organism within its um, environment so we'll talk about the laws of limiting factor so in um, ecology you have three uh, basic laws of limiting factor you have the Leibig law of the minimum we have the black man's law of limiting factor and finally the shefford law of tolerance so the first law states that the growth of a population and development of an organism could be regulated or limited by the scarcest resource not by the resources in abundance so here what Leibig is just trying to say is that the resources that is less or we have in little uh, quantities what actually regulates the, the growth of a population for instance if we have abundance of water and we have abundance of food but there is no um, there's no abundance of light the light becomes the factor that regulates the growth of a population just like we have in Nigeria now we will have fuel scarcity and increase in the price of fuel to five something so this fuel now becomes a limiting factor and it also affects the price of every other thing in the ecosystem for example transportation have increased the uh, price of food items have also increased so in all, in, in, in other words is indirectly affecting the factors that affect us directly so and that's what we call the independent limiting factor of course we will we'll still meet that um, as we move forward in the lecture so um i said that this law was originally developed by carl sprenger so it was carl sprenger that proposed this law and then later popularized by Justus von Leibig, Leibig sorry. So um, for the second law, which is the black man's law of limiting factor, and this was proposed by British plant physiologist Frederick Frost Blackman in 1905. So um, this law simply states that a biological or an ecological process that depends on multiple factors would tend to have a rate limitation by the pace of the slowest factor so i'm um, taking for instance um photosynthesis in plants 
then of course we know that for photosynthesis to occur where the plants will need carbon dioxide we need water and we need energy and of course looking at the equation it will need six molecules of carbon dioxide 12 molecules of water and light so if uh, for instance, um, this carbon fours are reduced to two or one, uh, which could be as a result of the closure of the stomata in the in in response to elevated temperature in the environment. So, and this carbon fours are become reduced to one or two. Now, I found out the rate at which this photosynthesis will occur will not be the rate at which it will occur now. So, even if we have twenty-four molecules of water and excess energy the uh, photosynthesis will be will, will occur at the slowest pace okay because the the one of the factors is being um, affected so that's just what the law is trying to say then we'll look at the third law with the shelford law of tolerance and this law state that the survival sussex of an organism is suggested to depend on a complex set of environmental factors and that that organism will have a definite minimum, maximum, and optimum environmental factor that determine its success. So, um, what the law is just trying to say is that um, the survival sources of an organism differs from one organism to the other, even from different species. Okay, and the way, for instance, a lava, um, you know, uh, uh, rates it has its tolerance different from uh, an adult. Okay, even in humans, in different human being, we have different rates of tolerance. It's not the way I endure pain that is the same way that you endure pain. So, and all these things join together to uh, uh, affect the survival rate of this organism. There are some people that, um, when being shot at with a gun, can actually survive the gun uh, wound and they will be taken to hospital and they will be treated. Why there are some that when they accidentally got shot, maybe in the leg, without even touching any vital organ, they won't even survive it. They will just die up. So the way that people um, tends to um, as, um, you know, the, the, their, their rate of um, tolerance to different things that happen to them is actually what determine their survival rate in an environment. So, um, this law was developed in 1913 by an American zoologist, Victor Ernest Shelford. So, I can exam in exam, I could ask us to um, list the three laws of limiting factor. I can ask us, um, Dash proposed um, the law of... Um, uh, of, of tolerance okay so you could know the name and also the year that it was proposed then talk about the kinds of limiting factor of course we've talked about the types of limiting factor i will say that is biotic and abiotic so now we'll talk about the kinds of limiting factor there are five kinds we have one density dependent limiting factor and these are the factor that are actually dependent on the size of the population so if um I said, I said example include food, water, and disease. So, for instance, um, in terms of disease, a densely populated uh, environment will, will spread. Um, the, if there is a disease outbreak, the disease will spread uh, more fast in a densely populated environment when compared to a sparsely pop, uh, environment. Okay. So, also food. The more the number of population, the more food they will require and even water. So we have the second one, which is the density independent limiting factor. So this factor are not really um, dependent on how dense a population is. So whether the population is densely populated or sparsely uh, uh, populated is really um, not the business of this limiting factor. And the example include catastrophic events such as earthquake or volcanic eruption. Of course, we heard of the earthquake that happened in Tokyo that killed a lot of uh, in, in, uh, thousands of people. And this have really helped to de decrease the number of population in Tokyo. And then the, the, the event or the limiting factor didn't actually consider whether um, Turkey is um, densely populated or not. So this is uh, what we call the uh, density independent limiting factor. So we have the third one, which is single limiting, single limiting or co limiting factor. So a single limiting factor is when there is only one factor, and the one with the maximum demand limits the system. So for instance, um, like I, I I mentioned earlier, the 
if if we have uh, abundance water and uh, a little food the food becomes the single limiting factor and it will um, affect the growth of a population in that community so have the core limiting factor whereby um the factor that affect the population of an organism in an ecosystem indirectly but increases the limitation the limitation of the factor directly affecting the population just like when i told us about the fuel scarcity and how this um uh, fuel is really affecting the price of food items the price of transportation which is now directly affecting us for instance you may say that uh, fuel is not um, affecting you because you do not have um, a car you do not have a generator and so you do not consume fuel but then it's indirectly affecting you because the price of food items has gone up the price of transportation have also gone up as well for instance in UNICEF now wherever you're going is 150 independent of how far or near the place you're going to is so this is how these factors are indirectly affecting the factors that are directly affecting us so that's what we uh, refer to as core limiting factor so number four is independent limitation so this occurs when two fact two factors both have limiting effect on the system but work through different mechanism of course you can see the difference between this independent limitation and co-limiting factor but the co-limiting factor notes that the factor is not directly affecting the system but instead, it's affecting the limiting factor, which is now affecting you in particular. But independent limitation, both factors are affecting you, but they just work through different mechanisms. And then you have the synergistic limitation. This is the fifth one. So this occurs when both factors contribute to the same limitation, limitation mechanism, but in different ways. So in exam, if I ask us, list the five kinds of limiting factor you have one synergistic limitation independent limitation single limiting and co-limiting factor you have the density uh density dependent limiting factor and the density independent limiting factor oh so we have come to the end of the slide thank you for um, paying actively attention to this lecture um if you have any question you can just drop it on the comment section and i'll answer you i really hope to um, come to class so we can do a revision before the exam um thank you so much and have a nice day